<laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you. Actually, I was looking for the president. He had to step out to the West Wing. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I could well, go. Do pistol whip the trucking industry. Uh, why would he? Because he can't save a gunshot victim, and he can't stop a hurricane. You are thoroughly charming. Well, thank you. You know, one of the things that happens when I stay away too long is that you forget that you don't have the power to fix everything. You have a big brain and a good heart and an ego the size of Montana. <laughs> <laughs> you do, Jed. You don't have the power to fix everything. But I do like watching you try. The intercom's been knocked out. They're looking for him on foot, sir. Is there somebody on there now? The kid in the radio show. You're kidding. No, sir. Jack, talk to the boy. The worst of it's coming up the stairs right now. Hello. Hello. Ma'am, I'm Admiral Hackett. I was on duty when it happened. Good to meet you, Admiral. Abby. Now, <sighs> yeah. 101.9. Yes, ma'am. When's the last time you checked? About an hour ago. Pulse and pressure? Pressure dropped before he fainted, but it's coming back. 105 or 70? Yes. I want to put him on IV saline and vitamin solution. Honey, are you still dizzy? I was wondering when you were going to notice me. Are you still dizzy? No. He's lying. Give him flumidine. You're very sexy when you're in doctor mode, you know that? Get me an IV saline solution and 100 milligrams of flumidine. Stat. I could jump you right now. I could kill you right now. My thing's more fun. I don't care if Canada invaded Michigan, Jed. You call me. Well, the good news is your temperature's gone down. Can I go to the office? No. Why not? It hasn't gone down enough, and it's gonna go back up again. Why? Because you have the flu. Here's the thing, though. I never really saw you study while you were in med school. Deep breath. Do you even know what you're listening for right now? Do you know how many other people I could have married? How many? Shh. I'm going to the office. OK. Really? Feel free. OK. Uh-oh. Anything else? Uh, all right. OK. I think I'll stay here for a little bit. OK. Uh, Abby, but you've got an itch for Sam Seymour. I do not have an itch. A little itch. Abby? You want a nickel's worth of free advice? Sure. Don't go for the geniuses. They never want to sleep. Hey. <laughs> oh, Leo, I, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't take you away. Oh, from no, no, no. Valerie, would you mind? I do not have an itch. Valerie? I'm going. <laughs> Bye, sweetie. <laughs> Bye, Daddy. Abby? What's going on? Nothing. Uh, like I said. What should I know that I don't know? I just thought we should be on the same. Why did you side? cancel your trip? Because he. Because has... the president has a temperature. The president's not in nursery school. This is me. This has happened before. I see you trying to cover the panic. I see you prescribing medication. I think you're giving them shots. What does he have he can't tell people? He has the flu. Oh, you would not have come back for the flu, Abby. He fainted. He was running a fever. He has multiple sclerosis, Leo. Oh, Abby. A fever could be life-threatening. Abby. I want to take your temperature. You've taken it 14 times in the last three hours. You're not taking it again. Oh, fine. At least not with a thermometer. <laughs> I'm saying if you want to take it recreationally. Well, there's something wrong with you, you know that? Yes, I do. If you do get nervous, just look at me or look at your parents. OK. But you're not going to get nervous, are you? Nope. Because if you do, I'll beat your brains out. Yes, ma'am. Not me personally, because I have people who do that for me. But you get the idea. Your guy steps out of a motorcade, and that's three column inches above the fold. My guy's on page 23. Your guy's married to our guy, and our guy won an election. Which is something you and your people can have to get used to. Your guy has a 48% approval rating. My guy's at 61. And bite me. Ah, point well argued. The wire has a piece. It'll be picked up. Sources close to the first lady say that she's... Ron Erland? Yeah. Who are the sources? I don't know. Sam spoke to Lily. She doesn't know anything about it. Is it Lily? Yeah. 
Mrs. Bartlett should slide in a statement back door. Ron Ehrlich is an old friend, but she supports whatever. Yeah, but she's not going to unless someone tells her to. Well, that sounds an awful lot like your job, CJ. Yeah, but I was just in there, and the president doesn't want me to handle the first lady. Did he say he didn't want you to handle the first lady because he didn't want you to, or did he say it like, handle the first lady, but I'm not the one who told you to? That's what I don't know. You gotta learn the signs. I've got most of the signs. You don't have that one? I'm learning that one. <laughs> Mr. President? I'm out of here. Stay. Right. Chicken. Hello. Hello. Hello, pumpkin. Abby? Hello, gumdrop. Listen. Sam Seaborn came to see my chief of staff today. In fact, he did it twice. Well, your chief of staff is a very attractive woman. Maybe he was, you know. Jed. Abby, I told CJ specifically. Then CJ got the signal wrong. No, she didn't. What? She didn't get the signal wrong. I wanted her to send someone. Are you telling this me? This wire thing is a problem for me. The kid on TV was a mistake. And the amendment from Becky Reisman just will it. bring down a trade bill that's been worked on for years. I said I just killed it. Fine. Jed, we share a bed. Why didn't you just come to I me? I staffed it out to CJ. You staffed it out? That's right. You don't staff me out. You don't give CJ signals, you don't send Sam, and you don't bring Danny Concannon up here. Don't handle me, Jed. Oh, don't play me, Abby. Don't work me. A lot of people around here think it was Lily Mays who planted you have a preference for Ron Early. It wasn't Lily Mays. I know it wasn't Lily Mays. It was you. Yes. Yes. Yes, and I'm sorry about that, but I wanted Ron to know that he had my support. Well, you put me in a bit of a spot there, Abigail. I name Ron Ehrlich now, which I was going to do anyway, that makes it look like I'm taking instructions from my wife. Still, it was wrong. Are you talking about you or me? I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you sending people for me. And I'll tell you what else I'm talking about. I'm talking about you waiting a day to name a new Fed chair because 30 years ago, the new Fed chair was my boyfriend for six months. I am talking about sending me messages through the press and staking out agendas on morning shows. We are not going to be these people, Abby. I'm not going to do it. I'll walk up to the hill right now and I would give the Speaker of the House my resignation. The House isn't in session. You want to see me get on the phone and put it in session? Don't raise your voice to me. It was nine months, Abby, not six months, and I waited a day on Skippy because the Fed chair is a fairly important position, and I wanted to make damn sure my decision was right. You already made your decision. How the hell do you know? You just said so. I name Ron Ehrlich now, which I was going to do anyway, and it looks like I'm taking instructions from my wife. Yes. 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 Okay. So just ease up on the high ground. On that point, I concede the high ground. And I concede I was wrong about the thing. Good. However. No, no, however, just be wrong. Just stand there in your wrongness and be wrong and get used to it. However. Nine months, Abby. However. Yes. I'm still going to kick your ass on child labor. Abby, please. Jed. If it was one of our girls in that factory, you'd send in the Marines. Yeah. Did you talk to Zoe today? She went back to her dorm. She and Charlie had a fight because the service doesn't want them to show up at this thing together. Mm -hmm. Maybe she'll be so traumatized by this experience that she'll never date another boy again. Well, he left here a little while ago, and I'd say that in about an hour, the lights will be off, there'll be a sock on the doorknob. Don't finish that sentence. I'm a man of questionable health.